All right, hey guys, Mr. Kyle, Myers Mathematics, and let's just jump right into it. This is solving systems of inequalities. They want us to sketch the solution to each system of inequalities, aka graph the things, and then where they overlap, that's the answer. All right, so we're also going to do some primary versus secondary colors here so you can see where the solution is. Um, and I would actually recommend doing that if you don't already have some colored pencils or pens or whatever um, I would recommend getting some um, you could do blue and yellow and green blue and yellow make green you could do blue and red which make purple right so blue red and purple um, or you could do uh, red and yellow and orange red and yellow make orange those would be my top three suggestions you could do other colors as well if you want you don't have to make them so that it like makes sense when you blend them necessarily but I would probably recommend it. That way it's really easy to see where the solution actually is. So that's what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to graph each one in a primary color, show the solution, and then you'll be able to see where they overlap. And I'll use their secondary color for the, the actual solution. Right, so when it says sketch the solution. Okay, so it's going to be like a, like a picture. It's almost like you're coloring in a picture. So let's go ahead and get started. We want to graph this one first. Not that it really matters which one you do first, but we want to graph this one. Let's go ahead and do it. So when we graph, we're going to do the y-intercept first. Y-intercept. And then the slope is negative 1. There's no number in front of x, which means it's a 1. Negative 1, which is negative 1 over 1. So I would go down 1, right 1. So right there. Okay, and then normally what I do is um, I'll graph several different points. If it's a dotted line, especially, dotted or dashed. If it's a solid line, then I'll, you know, just kind of do a solid line. So that's that's kind of the thing is, and, and, and I'm also in this, in this series. So this is a series on Algebra 1 worksheets, working them all out. I've also done how to sketch the solution of one inequality so i'm not going to get too much into that either and that's why this video is going to be a little bit quicker because that one is already been covered as well but basically we're going to use a solid line because it's less than or equal to right the or equal to is the key there all right so we kind of just go like this doesn't have to be super perfect right i'm just kind of trying to get it around where it's supposed to be. Okay, so the only difference between graphing inequalities and graphing equations is two things. So you're still going to use the y-intercept and the slope, right? I still use the y-intercept and the slope, which is what you do anyways for an equation. But the difference is two things. One, it's either going to be solid or dashed, or dotted, or whatever you want to call it. And then it's either going to be graphed above or below. There's like one exception to that rule, but for the vast majority of these graphs, it's going to be graphed above or below the graph. That's how you want to think about it, above or below, okay, because it's y. Like nine and a half times out of ten, it's y less than, greater than, or equal to, blah, 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 and then a bunch of stuff, right? So this is y is less than, less than, does that make you think above or below? It doesn't make me below. So that would be all of that space. And of course, it keeps going, right? So I'm just kind of sketching around where the actual, like, you know, gridded parts are. Um, you could keep going if you wanted to, I guess. But like, you know, you don't need to do all that work necessarily. I'm gonna do blue and yellow for this one, and then uh, for the latter half, maybe I'll do like blue and red. I think that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so that was that graph. We are done graphing that graph. Let's graph this one. And also, as we move on here, I'm gonna go just a little bit faster. This first one's a little bit slower, and then I'll kind of pick up the pace as I go. So if it seems like I'm going a little slow, you can always, you know, increase the speed in the settings or scrub ahead a little bit if you like. Um, but I will be picking up the pace as we go. So that way, if you are wanting kind of more of a challenge or if you want to see what it looks like when you've quote-unquote arrived, when you know how to do this really well and you're just like crushing it, if you want to see what that looks like, that's what I'm going to do by the time I get to the end is I'm just going to work it out as if I'm working it out for myself. Not really explaining it, just kind of doing it. 
right? How I would do it. So anyways, yellow graph, plus 2, go up 2, there it is. And then the slope is negative 5. So again, negative 5 over 1. If it's not over 1, if it's not over anything, then it's over 1. Negative 5 over 1. So go down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1. Oh, look at that. So this point right here, if you're graphing a system of equations, this point would be the solution. This point where the two lines cross is not necessarily one of the solutions. Not necessarily. It can be, but not necessarily. So I'm just going to draw a, a solid line here again because it is an or equal to. Oops, don't come off that. There it is. All right, solid line because it's the or equal to. And it's greater than. Okay, so above. All right, this one's really slopey, but above the line, kind of imagine here, it would be something like this. There it is. There's above. So now you can see where they cross, right? So up here at the top left, if you're looking at the top left area over here, you have nothing. Then kind of like up, up and to the right, there's just the yellow graph. Down and to the left, there's just the blue graph. But down and to the right, down and to the right, the blue and the yellow are mixed. Blue and the yellow are mixed here. So there's our solution. All right, so green is the solution. All of that green stuff, any point that is within all that green stuff is a point that is part of the solution to the system of inequalities. And that's the thing. It's since system of inequalities have a bunch of solutions, it's like an area of solutions, there's an area for the answer when they where they cross too. So it's not just one answer, it's like a bunch of answers. Right? All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. And again, we'll pick up the pace a little bit here. So we got this guy first. Again, slope is negative 1 over 1. We're going to go down to 2 first. So same exact graph, actually. Yeah, same exact graph, um, besides the, the sign. Now what I'm going to do here, since I noticed that it's greater than, not greater than or equal to, just greater than. Simply greater than. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually just going to do some dots here. And then kind of put some arrows on the end. Because it is kind of a line, right? But I don't want to write it as a solid line because it's not equal to the line. It's only greater than the line, meaning it's only above the line. Whereas on number one, both graphs, it was the line itself and then above or below it. Here, it's only what's above the line, right? So only that, not the line itself. And that's the difference there. We're done with that. Got this one next. So plus 2 right here. And then down 5 over 1. So same exact graph. Notice it's the same exact graph. So it's assuming right here again. Now, this time it's not part of the solution. So initially, uh, in graph number 1, we had 1, comma negative 3. That was a solution of the graph. This time it's not. Because both graphs are not equal. It's just above or below. So let's go ahead and uh, sketch the rest of it. It's actually going to be um, it's going to be a uh, a dotted or uh, dashed line again. Um, I don't really have a lot of points that I can plot this time. Really, just those two that are like you know in the graph. So I'm kind of just going to like do like one of these, you know, just kind of put some dashes on it like that. So your dashes can be long, they can be short, you can do dots. I mean, unless your teacher is like, oh, hey, you have to do dashes. You have to do dots. There is no other way. If, you know, assuming they're not that person, then, you know, go for it. You know, do whatever you want, as long as it's not a solid line. Because the solid line is only when it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Okay, and then this one is less than, so below the graph, below the graph would be all of this stuff right here all below the graph right you might be thinking like well isn't that kind of like more to the left yeah eh, yeah it's it's a little bit more to the left yeah i agree but it is below the graph because this graph it would keep going right it's like way up here so so yeah that's still below the graph it's just a little harder to see that it's below when it's like really slopey like that but yeah everything's below right like below there below there below there 
And now I can see where the blue and the yellow meet, which is right here. And then there's my answer. And it, it ducks down all the way to here, all the way to where they cross. But it's not going to include where they cross. All right. Three and four. We're already a quarter of the way done, but there's only eight problems here. So I've only got six more to go here. And like I was saying, we're going to kind of pick up the pace as we go here. So let's look at this next one. Uh, we'll do yellow first. Why not? Plus two. Right there. And then one half. All right, so they actually give us a fraction this time. It's actually kind of nicer when they give you a fraction for the slope because then you don't have to put it over one. You don't have to try to, you know, think about anything. You just kind of already know what the rise and the run is. So rise one, run two. Okay. Now this one is uh, less than or equal to. So I am going to do a solid line. However, it is good to go ahead and graph all the points. That way you can draw your solid line pretty well. It doesn't have to be perfect usually, unless you have a crazy teacher. And then if you do, I'm sorry. But, I mean, as long as it's, you know, pretty good. I've, I've seen some pretty gnarly graphs in my time, but as long as, me personally, as long as I can see two points, like two clearly labeled points that are like actually on the graph, and then you kind of just, you know, did an obvious, like, swipe with your pen stroke kind of thing. I'm, I'd still be stuck with that. Okay. Minus 3. Right there. Down 2 over 1, right? So negative 2 over 1. So down 2 over 1. Which means that we can go the other way and do it, do it the other way, right? So up 2, left 1. Left 1, left 1. And this one, we want to keep it with the dots. We don't want to fill in those dots. You can you can dash them a little bit if you want. You know, throw some throw some dashes in there. It's kind of up to you how dotted or dashed you want to make it. Um, but it needs to be either dotted or dashed because it's not equal to, only less than. Less than means down. So down, 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 down. And now we can see the answer. All right. And green. All of that looks like a lot, but I mean, all of the answers are like a lot of answers because it's like a, a whole bunch of points. It's just, you know, sometimes the, the area will look like a lot of area and sometimes it won't. All right, number four. Yeller. X less than or equal to negative three. So this is that one exception I was telling you about. Most of the time it's above or below. This time it's not y values go up and down, right? Like the y-axis, it goes up and down. And that's why when it's less than, y less than, you go down, y greater than, you go up. Because y values on a grid go up and down. Well, now it's x. It's x is less than negative 3. So, x goes left and right. It doesn't go up and down. x goes left and right. So if it's x is less than or equal to negative 3, Less than is going to be in the left direction or the right direction, right? The lesser numbers. The lesser numbers are the negative numbers. So that's going to be left. So where's the x value of negative 3? Here it is, right here. And right here, right? That point would be negative 3, comma 1. Negative 3, comma 2, 3, 4. So x equals a number. And, oh, this needs to be a solid line. x equals a number is a vertical line. You can't graph something above a vertical line. It's not possible. But we can graph to the left of it. To the left. So all of that right there. All right. And then this one's a pretty standard graph right here. So it would be 2. And then we go up 5 over 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 3. So over here somewhere. And we can also go down 5 and, and left 3. So we can do that because negative 5 over negative 3 is the same thing as 5 over 3. Right? Negative divided by a negative is a positive. So negative 5 over negative 3 is the same thing as 5 thirds, which means I can go down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and left 3. Right there. Right? And this one is strictly less than, so I want to kind of do some dashes here. 
Okay, my dashes are not the best, but it's all good. Not trying to get it perfect here, just trying to get it close enough. All right. And then you can see where they might cross here. They're gonna, either going to cross over here or over here. Um, let's see. So it's less than, so we would graph it downwards. So less than graph downwards. And look at that. Yeah, it's way down in that bottom left corner there is where they cross. Right there. All right, cool. And with that, we are already halfway through. So let's go ahead and look at number five. Got some regular graphs here, nothing crazy going on, just some regular old graphs. So let's see. Let's do, we're going to do uh, blue and red this time, I think. So blue. And we have minus two. And we want to go, oh, down five. One, two, three, four, five. And right two. So somewhere over here. And then we can also go up five and left two. One, two, three, four, five, one, two. And solid line. That's a solid line. And there we go. And let's move this around just a little bit here. Solid line. And we're going to go down. Down, 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 down. So all of that. Okay, and then red, which one's red? That one's red. Haha. <laughs> okay, so two, right here. And then we go down one, right two. Down one, right two. Up one, left two. Up one, left two. Right? And if I haven't explained why I could do that before, it's because when you have a negative fraction, the negative can belong to either the numerator or the denominator but not both, okay? So the negative belongs to either the one or the two, because think about it, if it belonged to both, it'd be negative one over negative two, which the negatives then would cancel, and it would be positive one half, right? But it's not positive, it's negative. So the negative belongs to either the one or the two, which means I can go down one and right two, right, down one, right two, or I can go up one and left two, right? So just a little little uh, quick lesson there when you're trying to graph. That's why we can do that, all right? I'm going to throw in some, some dashes here. If you notice, I've been doing these a little bit different each time I need to do those dashes. Sometimes I'll do little dashes, big dashes, just dots. There's a lot of different ways you can do these, okay? But ultimately, as long as it's not a solid line, you're pretty much good to go here. So there's all that, and it's going to be where they cross. So where they cross is going to be all of this, all of that. We have red and yellow, or sorry, red and blue, all over that area right there. So all of that is the answer. All right, and then number six. All right, so got the red. So we have 2 thirds x plus 3. So we start with the 3. We would go up 2 over 3. Right? We can also go down 2 and right 3. Sorry, left 3. Down 2, left 3. Down 2, left 3. Doesn't really fit, but I'm going to make it fit. All right. And then solid line. Right? Solid line, solid line, solid line. And we go above. Above, above, above. So all of that right there. All right, then we do this one, all right, so minus 3, and then negative 4 thirds, so down 4, ooh, we don't really have space for that, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, over 3, 1, 2, 3, okay, so like that, and then I can also go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, over 3, so right there, okay, this one is going to be a dotted or dashed line. So like that, and just kind of throw some, throw some arrows on that thing, and there we go. It's going to be above, so above, 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 like that, and you can already see where the answer is. The answer is going to be 
right there. Okay, so as promised, we're coming up on the last two questions here. And I'm going to just knock these out without explaining them. Okay, so I'm just going to knock them out without explaining them. To show you what I would do to graph these. And so, before I get into this, before I knock out these last two, I wanted to share with you a cool document that I put together called The Five Math Mistakes Everyone Makes and How to Avoid Them. It is a awesome little just PDF thing um, that I made so that, well, I mean, you can figure out the math mistakes you're making and then, you know, not make them. So, you know, get the right answers instead of the wrong ones. So, just a general guide on things that people do and trends that I've seen on getting math problems wrong and how people are getting math problems wrong so that you can fix those mistakes. Okay? So if that sounds cool, if that sounds like something you want, then it is in the description below. You just go to my website, myersmathematics.com, and you can grab that guide. And I've got a bunch of other resources on there too, uh, blogs, videos, documents. Um, I'm working on courses. Um, probably if you're reading this, if you're watching this video years later, I will have several courses out by then. Uh, the most, the first one being the uh, a mini course on the math SAT uh, practice. So check out all that stuff. But anyway, so let's go ahead and wrap these up with these last couple here. So again, I'm just going to knock these out. And here we go. Okay. Oh, actually, we haven't solved something like this before. So I said I was going to do these without explaining them, but we actually don't have them solved for y yet. So we would want to solve them for y first. So I'll probably just do 8 without explaining it, but this one, we haven't come across this yet. So boom, boom. We have to get it equal to y, because otherwise it's not in the right form. If it's not in the right form, then we can't graph it. Got to have it in the right form to graph it. It's got to be an mx plus b. Okay, so I just subtract 4x on both sides, and then I'm good to go. All right, and then I can just graph it. All right, so plus 2, and then this is over 1. All right, so down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1. Down 4 over 1, All right, so down here. And then back up the other way, up 4 over 1, that way. And it is less than, so dots or dashes. I'm going to kind of just do some, some dashes here. And there we go. It's also going to be less than. So I'm going to shade down. So there's that. And then we do blue. Right? So y is greater than negative 2. Right? So where's the y value of negative 2? It's right here. Right? So all the y values of negative 2 would represent this horizontal line right here. I'm going to do dots this time. Dots, dots, dots because it's not or equal to, it's just strictly or greater than. And then, and then it's going to be above, right? So y is greater than negative 2. It's a horizontal line. But even though it's a horizontal line, it's still y. So we still graph either above or below. So it's going to be y greater than, so we shade above, which is all of that right there. I'm going to have purple right here for the answer. Okay, so now that we know that if you don't already have it solved for y, you have to solve it for y, I'm going to knock out this last one just how I would do it. Ready and go.
about done here. That one is going to be less than or equal to. And there it is. And we want to go less than, so down. So it's just going to be all this stuff in the middle, actually. So that's kind of cool. Okay. So all this stuff right in the middle of those graphs. And that's all of the answers for this particular worksheet. Now, there's a couple that I didn't see. There is a possibility that if you have parallel lines, there's no answer. If you have a parallel line, two parallel lines, and then one of them goes above and one of them goes below, well, since they never cross, you're not going to have any area that they share. However, if the parallel lines go like um, like in, in one direction, then you'd have like quite a bit of shared area there where they would both equal, and then a bunch of possible answers. Right? So watch out for parallel lines. You might have no solution for parallel lines. Um, but other than that, you're good to go. And I hope this video has been helpful, and I'll see you in another video real soon.